Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Cathedral this morning. My name is Penny Bridges. I serve as the Dean of the Cathedral, and it's my joy on this Independence Day to welcome you, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself in the journey of faith. And a special welcome if you are visiting with us for the first time. I hope that you will let us know a little about yourself um, at the greeters table outside and um, be sure to come back and visit us again soon. If you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week, I invite you to stand as I say a prayer for you. Back there, Nancy. Anyone else? Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Many happy returns. Um, Our Sunday forums at 9 a.m. are, we've now launched our month-long series on pride-related forums, and uh, next Sunday um, we'll have two speakers, Hilary Whittington will share her family's story about parenting a transgender child, and Christine Garcia will share her story about becoming the San Diego Police Department's first transgender officer. All are welcome. It's a hybrid forum. You can uh, come into the Great Hall and uh, be in person, um, or you can participate on Zoom from wherever you happen to be. Don't forget uh, that immediately following this service today, we are having an Independence Day parish picnic, and it's right across the street in Balboa Park. You can see the tents when you go over there. Um, There are box lunches. You may have ordered one. If you didn't order one, um, I suspect that there are plenty left over, and you can just pick one up over there when you arrive, um, and uh, we'll have a good time of uh, outdoor mingling and fellowship. That starts immediately after this service. The cathedral offices will be closed tomorrow in observance of the Independence Day holiday. Tuesday's chapter meeting uh, will begin with a 90-minute presentation, um, a report um, on the listening sessions that we held earlier in the spring about our ministry expansion uh, projects and prospects. Um, Everyone's welcome to dial into the Zoom and um, participate and learn from that presentation. It'll be recorded, you can watch it um, on demand, and then the following Tuesday, the 13th, at six o'clock, there'll be a Zoom congregational meeting to reflect on uh, the results of the listening sessions. On Saturday, the St. Paul's Zoom players will present their latest Zoom play reading, um, Arcadia by Tom Stoppard. It's a comedy, a a sort of period piece comedy, and everyone's welcome to be part of the online audience. Next Sunday, we are participating in the Pride March. This is a different plan this year for Pride. Um, It will start at 11 o'clock from Upas in the park and go north and up into Hillcrest. Um, So a contingent will leave from the cathedral during the the 10.30 service, um, and um, because we will not be staying here for communion, we'll have a street Eucharist at the end, but those who remain in the cathedral will, of course, continue on with the communion service, so you can choose either way. And uh, you may have noticed tables outside uh, with T-shirts. We have a limited number in limited sizes of free St. Paul's T-shirts to give away, Um, So we hope that you will wear um, a suitable t-shirt if you are coming on the march with us. Next Sunday at 6 o'clock, we'll have the latest in our series of Sacred Ground in Action Town Hall Meetings. Um, This is the next phase of our Sacred Ground learning experience, and uh, it's a Zoom meeting, and the topic next week is um, hate crimes, and all are welcome to participate in, in that session. I have several funerals to uh, let you know about. Um, As you know, we've had several deaths in the parish recently, and and funerals are now being booked um, following the pandemic. 
Uh, Mim Selgren's uh, funeral will be on Monday, July 19th at, nine, at 11 a.m. right here in the cathedral. And we'll send out emails that have all of this information. Um, and then um, this week on Thursday afternoon at All Souls Episcopal Church in Point Loma, Mick Keller's committal will take place Thursday at 4 o'clock. And, um, and then the funeral for Barnabas Hunt will be on August 20th, that's a Friday, at 11 a.m. right here. Um, and again, as, as I said, we'll be sending out notices so you don't have to remember all of that. And now let us gather to worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God is God of God and Lord of Lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God him alone you shall worship, to him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise, he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them, They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, What more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Holy Trinity, one God. Amen. Years ago, I gave my husband a book for Christmas, How the Irish Saved Civilization, by Thomas Cahill. My husband had two Irish grandparents, one on each side, But he insisted that he was English through and through, and not just English, but a proud Yorkshireman. I gave him the book to push back against his teasing, myself being Irish, that the Irish were somehow less than the English. He was surprised to find that the title of the book wasn't a joke. The Irish monks did, in fact, preserve literacy during the Dark Ages, So you could say they saved civilization. If you've ever made the mistake of assuming I was English, you know that I am quick to correct you. 
Irish and British, but never English. When some, one of my sons was starting to learn percentages in math class, he would proclaim proudly that he was 50% English, 50% Irish, and 50% American. <laughs> he got better at math. <laughs> Patriotism is a strange phenomenon. We identify ourselves with a particular patch of soil, and it becomes important to defend the decisions made on that patch to uphold the culture and customs of that patch, sometimes even to deny others the right to claim the same identity or to share that patch. The idea of nationhood is a relatively recent concept in human society, and the division of parts of the planet into distinct nations, often directed by nation-based empires, has caused and continues to cause enormous conflict and suffering. You've only to think about Israel, Palestine, or the Balkans, or Ireland for that matter, to get the picture. Today, of course, is Independence Day, as well as being Sunday. You may not know that Independence Day is designated a major feast in our Book of Common Prayer, along with Thanksgiving Day, and we have specially selected scripture readings. Most of the time, July 4th doesn't fall on a Sunday, so this year I wanted to give the Independence Day readings an airing. And that's why you're not hearing from the second book of Samuel or the Gospel according to Mark today, as you might expect based on the Sunday lectionary. It's not uncontroversial in Christian circles to make a religious festival of a national observance there's always the danger of falling into idolatry, of making this a day for jingoistic and xenophobic speeches. But it also presents us with an opportunity to reflect on the nature of patriotism, on the ideals that the founders of the nation expressed, and on the progress we have made or failed to make towards those ideals. The collect appointed for Independence Day is not the prayer you heard at the beginning of this service. That's because a national leader of the Episcopal Church recently published a note pointing out that the collect appointed for Independence Day says, the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us. While that is true for many people, it glosses over the fact that the founders did not share that liberty with every American citizen. And we know that it was many decades before all Americans would be accorded their liberty and full dignity as human beings and children of God. The collect we prayed today is more aspirational than self-congratulatory. And in this time of growing recognition of systemic racism and injustice, it seems appropriate to express our hope to achieve full justice and liberty rather than perpetuate a myth that has harmed many generations of Americans. It is possible to love your country and at the same time to acknowledge its imperfections. We do the same for our family members and God does the same for us. There's much to celebrate today, much to be proud of when we consider the achievements of this nation. The United States led the way in developing a democratic form of government. It resisted the perennial human longing for a monarch, which we've been reading about in the stories about Samuel and Saul. And it provided sanctuary for many, many people who sought the freedom to practice their faiths. Those scripture readings assigned for today call us both to remember those achievements and to keep striving to better them to love the stranger in our welcome of immigrants seeking a better life, to honor those who seek to walk by faith, whatever that faith may be, and to live in peace with our neighbors of every color, class, creed, and identity. This past year and a half, St. Paul's has been on a journey of self-education. Together, we've been reflecting on the human cost of this nation's wealth and power. It's been very hard for some of us 
to learn of the injustice, the abuse, and the fear that are a part of the daily lives of many of our brothers and sisters. And sadly, we are seeing stiff resistance in some parts of the country to the prospect of teaching our children about the less glorious aspects of American history. I've lived in this country for over 35 years, and I chose to become an American citizen. But I confess that for most of that time, I was ignorant of much of this country's history and oblivious to the depth of systemic injustice that the Sacred Ground curriculum has recently revealed to me. One major aha moment for me happened in June 2015. I was on a cross-country drive with my son from Virginia to San Diego, and we spent the last night of the trip in Phoenix. As we filled up with gas for the final leg of the journey on the morning of June 26th, Sam's phone alerted him that the Supreme Court had ruled in favor of marriage equality. As soon as we arrived home, I left my son to unpack his car, and I headed over to the LGBT Center in Hillcrest to join in the celebration. The joy and tears of the crowd were no surprise, but the aha moment for me was seeing many people carrying stars and stripes flags and hearing my friends speak about feeling at last like full citizens of the United States. I was deeply moved by their sincere patriotism. I believe that this educational journey we are all on is of God, and that God is calling us as a community and as a nation to grow in our generosity of spirit to one another and to the rest of the world. That our call as followers of Jesus is to practice humility and willingness to listen and learn, to reach across long-standing divisions, to remember that our first allegiance is to the God who made all the nations and all the peoples of the earth, who makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous alike. And that our Savior, God's Son, lived as a man of color in an oppressed community and suffered an unjust death at the hands of powerful men who could not tolerate the possibility of repentance and change. Today we celebrate freedom, one at a great cost, and we affirm our continuing struggle to achieve a more perfect union under God. We acknowledge that freedom is still unequally distributed, and that Christ set us free not to do whatever we like in our own interest, but free to open our hearts, to share our abundance so that all may flourish, to live not for ourselves, but for others. The founders of this nation held varying degrees of Christian faith, but they shared certain ideals, and they sought to live up to those ideals within the cultural limitations of their time. They would have identified closely with Abraham's story, as told in the letter to the Hebrews, desiring a better world, one that would reflect the kingdom of heaven. As followers of Jesus, we too long for that world. And so we pray that God may give us a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use this precious freedom to God's glory and for the welfare of all people. Amen. We believe in one God.
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for the welfare of the world, for your creation, especially in this critical time of climate change, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who sleep outside and those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. For Barnabas Hunt, Mick Keller, Daniel Graff, Carolyn Tanner Irish, Chesterlyn Becerra, Mim Selgren, Sydney Hudig, Nick Rutgers, Edmund Nitschmann, those who died in the condominium collapse in Miami, and for those we now name. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For the family of Barnabas Hunt, Jim Mullins, Brad Loveless, the Graff and Toby families, Bob Riggs, Joe Dennison, Bill Kelch, Buzz Dean, the family of Mick Keller, Victor, Mark Turgeon, Bob Sedlock, Donna Bradshaw, Katie Minson, Sean Coughlin, Jacqueline Brooks, Elaine Reynolds, Jan and Vernona Friesen, Joe Letzkus. For those affected by the condominium collapse in Miami, and for those we now name. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for our nation, as we commemorate the Declaration of Independence. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have not done, and by the love of you, O Lord, we have done our neighbor to ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to him. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your love and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Do your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing 
always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, above all, the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it, <coughs> it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly, heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Paul, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. This is the table not of the church, but of Jesus Christ. It is made ready for those who love him and who want to love him more. So come, you have much faith and you have little. You have been here often and you have not been 
for a long time, or ever before. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come not because the Church invites you. It is Christ, and he invites you to meet him here. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sickness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the light of Christ blind us to all else save God alone. May the strength given to unto St. Paul be shared by us. May the faith, hope, and love of the eternal wisdom rest in us to illuminate our minds, possess our hearts, and direct our ways this day and forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.